Okay, we're going to break away from the White House briefing there. That's the Energy Secretary. Uh, but this is the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell talking about a delay in the vote on the health care bill. Let's take a listen. This week, but we're still working toward getting uh, at least 50 people in a comfortable place. We're going down to the White House at 4 o'clock. The president invited us to come down. The White House has been very much involved in these discussions. They're very anxious to help. And we appreciate the invitation, and I hope all of our members will head down. I think that will likely uh, be the case. Well, the schedule may have changed a little bit, but one thing that hasn't changed, and that is Obamacare is collapsing. <clears throat> it is a failed system that needs to be replaced, and uh, we believe that the legislation that we're uh, trying to get up on the Senate floor and consider there uh, will take America in a better direction. It will help bring stability to the marketplace, that will bring affordability to people across this country who are suffering under the curse of high premiums and high deductibles and high out-of-pocket costs, uh, so much so that since 2013 in the individual market, uh, premiums across the country have literally more than doubled. That has to be addressed. Uh, we want to make sure that we are preserving the access that people have uh, to coverage for uh, pre-existing conditions. And uh, also, we want to make sure that Medicaid is sustainable, not just for today, but for the future as well, and that uh, we give states more flexibility to design programs that make sense for their populations. And have seen many of the experiments and examples that have worked around the country where they're operating it in a much more cost-effective, efficient way, saving taxpayer dollars and delivering high-quality health care to the people in their individual states. Uh, those are our objectives in this. Those continue to be our objectives. And uh, as I said, while schedule may have slipped a little bit, uh, we are intent on rescuing Americans from a failed system that has uh, driven up their costs and made it uh, more difficult for them to find coverage. Uh, the pain of Obamacare continues to get worse around the country. I was in Wyoming this past weekend visiting a, a hospital, talking to doctors and nurses and patients, so many of them impacted uh, in a bad way by the Obama health care law. I just had a woman in the office this morning from a small community uh, in Wyoming, lost her insurance when Obamacare came into play because it was good enough for her and her family, but apparently it wasn't good enough for the Democrats. Uh, she now, she and her husband have a policy. It's expensive. It doubled in cost. Her deductible is $6,500, and she's for her as well as $6,500 for her husband. She says he will not go to a doctor. He is counted as somebody insured under Obamacare, but according to them, he doesn't have usable insurance. The Republican proposal, there's a number of key points to it. We eliminate the dreaded mandates that people across the country hate that you have to buy a government approved product. We eliminate all the taxes. And we return a lot of authority to individuals and states getting things out of Washington. And I will tell you, when I was in the state Senate, we always felt that we could do a much better job with the same amount of money helping more people, more patients, more families with health care. We just had Washington not telling us how to do it because we knew better at home than people did in Washington. And that's how we feel it's very important in terms of putting Medicaid on a sustainable path for the future. The states need the authority to do it in the right way. Medicaid was initially set up to help poor women, children, and the disabled, and it has taken in a direction way different than that with bonus payments to sign people up for Obamacare who are able-bodied, working-aged individuals. Finally, our proposal really focuses on this incredible high cost of insurance that people are faced with, the doubling rates of Obamacare. What we uh, do, looking at these rates, and the CBO has scored it, says actually lowers the rates for insurance 30 percent a couple of years from now. That's what people are screaming about at home. The increasing rates and the projections for next year are even higher under Obamacare. So Obamacare is a bus. It's going off a cliff. The Democrats are saying, stay on board. We're trying to rescue the American people from this bus that they're on. No, no. We're continuing to talk about it. It's a very complicated subject. I remember how challenging it was for the Democrats when they were enacting this uh, back in 2009 and 2010. It's a big, complicated subject. We've got a lot of discussions going on, and we're still optimistic we're going to get, get there. 
Will your ongoing discussions involve Democrats at all? They're, they're not interested in participating in this. Leader McConnell, can, yeah. can you address for a minute, though? I know that, you know, legislative process, you have to go back and recalibrate these bills here. But you spent a lot of time in private writing this bill. You dialed in your conference here. Isn't that an indictment on what you put forth at this stage that it wasn't ready to go? <laughs> no. Why not? No, it's an ongoing discussion. And uh, members have want several of them want more time. Uh, we have a number of different discussions going on that have been going on for six weeks now, and they continue. This is a big, complicated subject. If, if none of you have ever covered a big, complicated bill, they're, they're hard to pull together and hard to pass. Ed? Leader, uh, you, you have done a great job of pulling together your caucus with your conference here. Can you tell us about the process of us being in this position so far, not done yet. Secondly, what should the president be doing at this point to get this bill passed? Well, he, the president's been very involved over the last week, talking to members individually. Um, he wanted to talk to all of us together today. I think that's helpful. And um, look, uh, co legislation of, of this complexity uh, almost always takes longer than anybody else would hope. Uh, but we're going to press on. We think the status quo is unsustainable for all the obvious reasons we've discussed over and over and over again. And we're optimistic we're going to get to a result that's better than the status quo. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, um, the president had deferred to you largely on this legislation. Now that you have not accomplished it on your preferred time frame, is it going to be the president that takes it over the finish line? Is that his role now? Well, we, we always anticipated the president would be very important in getting us to a conclusion. After all, under our system, he's the man with the signature. And in the early stages, it would candidly have been a kind of a waste of his time in the early stages. We needed to get this far enough down the path to where there were a few issues extant that needed to be closed. And we're delaying the process so that we can close those remaining issues. And he's fully engaged and being helpful in every way that he can, including the meeting this afternoon. Thanks a lot.